I call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. For the audience here tonight, the City of Glendora utilizes a hybrid meeting format to allow for participation both in person and virtually. In consideration of others in the business being conducted tonight, please silence your phones and any electronic devices and refrain from speaking unless recognized. Again, this is a public meeting for the community of Glendora. We appreciate and respect your participation here this evening. Madam Clerk, will you please conduct roll call? Uh, thank you. I will now conduct an oral roll call and request that each uh, commission member is states present when their name is called. Uh, Commissioner Chavez? Here. Commissioner Gerber? Present. Commissioner Kumjian? Present. Uh, Commissioner Louis Porchet is absent. And Chair Burrell? Present. Thank you. Um, now, uh, Commissioner Gerber will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, does anyone wish to reorder or add to the agenda tonight? Okay, hearing none, we will now open the public comment period. I now invite members of the public to address the Community Services Commission. Speakers are limited to three minutes speaking once both on and off agenda items. All questions should be directed through the presiding officer. This is your time to speak uninterrupted. If you are in attendance, please fill out a speaker card and submit it to the recording admin before the close of the public comment period. Once recognized, speakers should advance to the podium, state your name and the subject matter you wish to discuss. If you are participating via Zoom, select the raise hand icon in Zoom before the close of the public comment period. Once recognized, you will receive a request to unmute, state your name and the subject matter you wish to discuss. Have we received any public comment cards? I think you at this time we received no uh, request to give public comment via the zoom um, meeting or emails via the public comment email. Okay, we will go ahead and close the public comment period and moving on I would now like to invite each Commission member to provide a statement or report uh, Commissioner Chavez. Uh, I glad to be back here uh, this month and uh, we had a lot of exciting events coming for the, uh, this summer that we're putting on a lot of organizations. So we're looking forward to that uh, concerts in the park. And uh, so looking forward to seeing all the community uh, residents out there. So uh, other than that, I don't have nothing else to report. Commissioner Chavez, or, I'm sorry, Gerber. I get my Davids mixed up. Thanks Chair Burrell. Uh, just a few things, uh, was able to uh, award uh, the Ed Kirkpatrick Award uh, this past weekend to the recipient, uh, Bruce Hunt, up at the uh, Mnuchin Park um, Pony Field. Uh, he was greeted there by a lot of his family, peers, uh, coaches from the past, and was actually surprised, had no knowledge of the award being presented to him. Uh, and halfway through, he still didn't realize it was him because as I was reading, I did not disclose a name till the end. And then he started piecing it together based on some of the information. Um, he was quite honored and moved and it was, uh, it was a joy to present to him. Uh, he was very well deserved. And um, some of you may know Mr. Hunt, some of you may not. Uh, he's been a longstanding coach for girls basketball, softball, baseball for over 20 years, plus years in the community. Um, and he continues to coach, even though his kids are no longer um, eligible to participate in some of the leagues. So uh, very well deserved. Uh, other than that, uh, exciting to hopefully get back down to the teen center now that school is out uh, with the fact that uh, hopefully there's going to be a, an influx of kids down there um, getting back to normal. Uh, look forward to being a part of uh, and hearing what's going on there and, and how we can continue to grow uh, the enrollment down there. In addition to also, um, as Commissioner Chavez mentioned, uh, the concerts in the park, movies in the park. So uh, again, this summertime really brings out the best in the community and uh, there's a lot of activities going on. So I look forward to being a part of all of that. And that's all I have, thank you. Commissioner Kumjin. Yes, thank you, good evening. Happy summer, everyone. 
And like David and David had mentioned, I do look uh, forward to all the summer activities. And just a quick report from the Glendora Trails Council. Um, a discussion was had in the last meeting, uh, June 6th, and rega uh, regarding the Rowley Wilderness Amphitheater Memorial proposal to City Council, which, I, which was passed unanimously. And um, also uh, hikes were announced uh, for summer, uh, day hikes and evening hikes. So the day hikes, um, uh, the upcoming day hikes, uh, June 25th at South Hills, July 30th at Little Dalton Canyon, um, August 27th at uh, Colby and Colby Dalton Trails, and then evening hikes, uh, June 14th. Um, a few days ago, July 12th at Little Dalton Canyon and August 9th at Big Dalton Canyon. And, um, and, that's, <clears throat> and that's my report. Thank you. Um, uh, this past month, uh, Brittany and I uh, attended the Older Americans Luncheon and at the LaFetra Center. And that was really lovely. They did a great job. The seniors were very excited. They had we had delicious food. Um, gave out three, I think, of the uh, Ruth Harper Awards, which was really exciting because they were all there and they were all very excited and thrilled to be honored. Um, and so that was that was really, really nice. Everyone, everyone had a great time and um, it was great to honor our older residents um, and get to spend some time with them and share their wisdom uh, with us younger folks. Um, and then, Beyond that, uh, so that's for, for Brittany and I, my um, camps are in full swing. My kids are very much enjoying art and wizard camp is a huge hit. Oh my gosh. I've heard four days in a row now that this was the best day ever. So that's a, uh, that's a good one uh, for what it's worth. But um, yeah, I, I echo everyone on sentiments, looking forward to uh, more summer fun activities on the way, which I think we're going to hear about in a second. So I would um, now like to invite uh, Community Services Director John Geary for any statements or reports. At this time, I have no report. Uh, we're talking about a lot of our activities uh, later with uh, the items. Um, so now we will move on to item number two. Uh, the items on the consent calendar will be enacted by one motion without individual discussion unless a commissioner has requested it be removed for a separate discussion. Does anyone wish to comment on item number two? Okay, can we request a motion to approve? Uh, thank you. You want to use the voting client? Did not. Almost had it. To motion uh, and second. I second. That'd be great. And you want to use the mic? I second that. Thank you. That is a motion by Commissioner Kumchian, a second by, sorry, a second by uh, Commissioner Chavez if you can use the voting client. And I will now take a roll call vote as well. I think we're missing one vote. There we go, thank you. Um, Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gerber? Yes. Commissioner Kumjian? Yes. Commissioner Luis Porche is absent and uh, Chair Burrell? Yes. Thank you, that carries 401. Okay, there are no uh, member agenda items as well as no unfinished business items. So we move on to number three, uh, new business, recreation, special events and programs for summer 2022 to invite recreation superintendent Annie Warner to report. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. Um, first, I would like to introduce to you our new recreation supervisor, Romero Valderrama. Um, let me ask him to come up here. So he just started this Monday. He comes from the city of Diamond Bar. Um, granted, it's a new, we were just joking about the photos on the, the wall here. We're incorporated in 1911, Diamond Bar 1989, wow. but we are very similar. Um, and they have a wonderful recreation department in Diamond Bar. And we're really happy that he's on board with us. Oh. Welcome. All right, well, this evening we're going to be highlighting some of our summer um, events and programs that we're offering to our community this summer. Um, this summer, our, uh, many of our events and camps filled up quickly. Um, as of today, we have 5,943 total participants or spots filled up. 
Um, so that's how many different, um, not necessarily people, but people are within the activities. Um, Camp Kahia, which many of you know, is an eight-week program. It will begin this um, Monday, June 20th. Um, we'll run eight consecutive weeks at Big Dalton Canyon. Um, many of the weeks filled up within the first three minutes. Um, we are happy to report that we also have about 38 CITs, which are counselors in training. Um, that is middle school and high school kids that most of them have participated through the program. And then it's a great feeder program for us to then hire them to be leaders up at camp. So we're happy with the 38 that we have. Um, camp, as many of you know, it's filled with archery, hiking, digging in the dirt, doing all those kind of fun things. So we'll do eight weeks um, with 80 kids per week. So that's 640 kids. And we do offer camperships. Um, so we work coordinate with the Glendora Coordinating Council and hold back spots for kids who are Glendora residents who might be in need of um, some assistance. And we personally went by and dropped off applications at each of the elementary schools for them to target and highlight students that they think would thoroughly enjoy this program to handpick. And because our goal is to send 80 kids, um, that would be our target. We haven't reached that in a couple of years, but the goal is to get the word out that these camperships are available and we want these kids to come and utilize the program and um, be up there. Next. Next, we have our swim lessons. We have a joint use agreement with the Glendora Unified School District and use the high school swimming pool. Um, we partner with the Glendora Aquatics facility or Glendora Aquatics. Um, they also hire numerous young adults who are swimming and participating in the swim programs at GHS. So they're the lifeguards doing the swim instructors. Um, we offer three, three sessions to our residents. Um, they're two week sessions and I believe they're $80 for every two weeks. So it is a pretty cost effective way to teach your child how to swim. Um, lessons are 30 minutes, um, five days a week for two weeks. So the goal is to teach swim safety. Um, the pool is also open for public swim between one and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. So that's also something that Glendora residents can take advantage of. Um, next up we have our sports classes and camps. You'll see numerous camps around town. We have pickleball, gymnastics. Um, they'll be utilizing all of our outdoor facilities and tennis courts. So um, we're trying to offer a wide variety from youth to adults. And a lot of the classes are resident driven, like they'll call and inquire. And our recreation staff does a great job in trying to solicit uh, instructors because then they have to then find instructors to teach the classes. Next. Concerts in the park. They will be starting on Sunday, um, June 26th. They will be held at the Larry R. Memorial Bandshell. Um, They're co-sponsored by the Glendora Kiwanis Club and will run eight consecutive weeks from 6 to 8 p.m. Many of you will be there um, doing the introductions before each concert. Um, the first one will be the Kings of Queen. Um, so we hope that we'll have a great turnout this summer. Next. Next, we'll have Movies in the Park. They are co-sponsored by the Glendora Rotary Club. Um, movies are held on Friday evenings and start at dusk. This year, we are partnering with the Glendora Public Library to celebrate their 50 years um, at 140 South. So they, um, in honor of their history, we decided to pick um, Back to the Future. They'll be having the DeLorean on hand and are inviting the In-N-Out truck and will be providing free hamburgers to those in attendance, um, which will be great and a great kickoff to our event and celebrating their facility. Um, from then on out, we will have movies, um, four more movies each Friday, and we'll have pre-events. And on the last movie will be Jungle Cruise, and they will be having a reptile show. So hopefully movies um, will be great. Um, next, day camps. Um, as Madam uh, Chair Burrell said, all right. Um, day camps are very, um, and selling out like crazy. We have everything from wizard camp, um, superhero camp, Lego camp, robotics, cooking. Um, and we even have academic things like writing, uh, mathematics for those who want to 
um, still sharpen those skills over the summer. So our staff does a great job in trying to offer something for everyone. I'm sure many of you saw the activity guide, a wide variety. They're always looking at trying to add more classes. The challenge is, is finding the instructors um, to offer that. Um, but we look forward to seeing you at our events and maybe in some of our classes. Do any of you have any questions? Gentlemen, any questions? I actually have a couple. Um, with the economic state that's out there, uh, from a cost perspective on like the camps and whatnot, it seems like we're maintaining costs mm -hmm. at a point to keep it still very affordable. Is that sustainable for us in for you guys in terms of payroll, in terms of being, you know, uh, cost effective? It is. So camp, we did make some adjustments. The price of busing went up astronomically, right. um, more than doubled. So therefore parents will still be driving their children up to Big Dalton and we'll only be utilizing busing on Fridays to bus them to the pool. So this, they're excited to go back to the pool this okay. summer. They'll go there on Fridays. Um, but we did make adjustments for the price increases, lack of staffing. Uh, we used to outsource um, the picture once a week as an example. We would have a photographer come up and take the photo. We're like, we could do this in-house. We could take a photo and we could print it ourselves, you know, 80 copies. So um, over the years, we have made adjustments to keep it at a low cost. Mm -hmm. And no, no pushback from the community in yeah. terms of it being, you know, I'm sure they enjoy the fact that you're keeping it relatively similar to what it has been in the past versus everything else out there right now that is double. Um, so yeah, we have about 50 plus on every week for the waiting list. Okay. So, and the sad thing is, is we only have a set amount of time. We are doing in-service this week with our staff. So many of them are still in college, having to get back from college. We need to do in-service CPR first aid training. We can't start until June 20th. Um, or usually about a week after Glendora Unified gets done. And we're going all the way up until August 12th and they're going back to school August 17th. So there isn't, I mean, we're getting max use of the summer. How, I mean, in terms of other cities, are we better suited financially in terms of our cost, right? In so if they're offering similar options, I would assume based on what we're seeing that we're lower, right? We're offering more for less, keeping it, relatively cost effective for our community and if that's the case how do we advertise that to the community at large to let them know that hey you're still getting the best of the best for reasonable amount of cost because i think that's important for people to realize what you are doing in order to maintain it for them yeah i, I think well day camp is kind of its own little entity like everyone realizes that's a bargain and they're getting a lot for their money. And we're one of the only cities around here that offers that. But as far as our recreation classes, whether it be the wizard camp, the Lego camp, um, they all have high enrollment. So I believe our residents, I, you know, based on the numbers of um, how many people have registered, that's, it's pretty good. So I believe the word is out. And when they actually start pricing things to send their kids to maybe a camp or something through a private mm -hmm. um, company, they realize it is a bargain to do the Lego camp through us. And maybe it does seem expensive at 199, but when you break it down per hour, it's $15 an hour. And that's that doesn't the going rate right for a babysitter or less than what right, you're paying a babysitter. Less than minimum wage in a lot of respects. And so. also uh, uh, Mr. Gerber, the instructors, our day camp is our only staff taught camps. Mm -hmm. All the rest are instructor led, which they're, they set the price. We tell them we take a certain amount mm -hmm. um, percentage, but they set the price on that. Sometimes they'll come in and we'll talk to them saying, uh, this might be out of your price range and you're not going to get the numbers. Um, so they look at that, but they do set the price uh, for those classes. Oh, I, I think it's a great thing that you guys have been able to do. And that's the point that I'm really trying to make is that you guys should be very, um, I'm very thankful. The community at large should be thankful. You should pat yourselves on the back for maintaining the enrollment that you have in an environment right now that to go and do anything is double and triple for what it used to be. And that could very easily price people out of, you know, the market. Mm -hmm. And 
to enable that for our community. Um, great job. So, and we uh, also do, and to follow up with your responses, we do also have our share a wish. So if there is somebody who is in need, um, they can qualify. It allows them hundred dollars per year to sign up a child. So whether that be for swim lessons or to take a class, any the class is over the hundred dollars, then we would work with them and they would then pay the difference. Um, so our goal is to have our residents um, enrolling in the classes. And, and I, I, again, I go back to being a part of the community service foundation and uh, something in our next meeting, I would definitely challenge us to um, communicate with you guys where you find the fact that there are families in need that can't financially do it. So as to not necessarily tap into your own budget, we have funds for such things. And maybe we as a, as a foundation can donate X amount of dollars um, allotted for families that need to enable them to maintain themselves in, in the program. So um, please keep that in mind and something that at our foundation, we definitely, um, I think is important to continue to give back. So thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Kimjian, any questions? Um, camperships, you mentioned camperships. What was the goal that you said? They hold 10 back per week. So that would be 80. Okay. And then as they don't fill, then we pull off the waiting list. Okay. So if not enough people are applying, um, we're not going to let those spots go to waste. Mm -hmm. So then we backfill them with the 50 plus people on the waiting list for that week. So usually if you're like in the first five or first couple on the waiting list for camp, the chances of you getting in are pretty good because the last four years, I'd say the camperships have just really declined. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we drove to each elementary school personally spoke with their staff principal and said, could you please like think of some students, they know their students better than we do at that age level and like put it, put, put, actually put it in their backpack and talk to their parent. Okay. All right. Great. And then uh, did you, do you have uh, with Lego camps? Is there a wait list on that as well with those classes? Some weeks there is some, there isn't, they do the Lego camps. There's like, I want to say it's four to seven mm -hmm. and then it's like eight to 12. They divide them up amongst their age groups. Um, but everyone who takes the class, even though they might think it's a little pricey, it's worth the money. Right. Um, the kids usually get to come home with like a motor or something right. um, that they would get to take home and still then build at home to make their um, Legos like mobile. And I wish there was Lego motorized. camp for adults. I would right? do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Uh, Wine and Legos. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Future idea. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Just wine with any of these ones. Um, uh, no, I, I, I echo um, uh, David and Eddie's uh, comment. I, I really appreciate the focus that you guys have on being like, not just fiscally responsible from like a being a good steward of funds thing, which is important, but also for the residents and, and um, going that extra mile to make sure that like our neediest, youngest residents get the advantage of, of these really fun programs because all of my daughter's friends, it's, it, it's nonstop. What classes are you taking? What camp are you going to? Or am I, I'm going to that week. Are you going to this week? Oh, you're going the week after. Like it is such a big deal to them. And so I'm just as a parent, so incredibly thankful that we have the opportunity to have this camp. And like, we had a text chain and we were 8 AM, like on our computers, like trying to get like tickets to like a concert. It was just like, Oh my gosh, are we going to get in? Cause, because the kids love it so much. And I know that that is like, so great, but at the same time, it's so hard because we do have limited resources and time and so many kids want to participate. So I guess, I guess it's a good problem to have. Um, my only question is, um, taking the, the, um, applications to the schools, did it help? Did, were there more kids than interested or was it just, we did get a, I personally fielded some phone calls and then Jennifer Kugler, Kugler directly handles the camperships. So I'm not sure okay. what she's but heard, but yes. And then they are also doing summer school at the yes. school. So hopefully they'll still be outreaching to them or when something comes up, um, when summer school's over, then those kids might be able to then get into the later weeks of camp. Great. That's awesome. That's like such great, like brainstorming and just like working with what you have and making, you know, finding ways, little ways to access, um, the, the needs and the people. So I think that's fantastic. So excellent work. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, I've lost my place now. Um, okay. Oh, 
I would like to request a motion to receive and file the report. I request a motion. I move. There we go. We get oh. <laughs> I, I sec, I move. Oh, I move. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I hear, <laughs> I see that there is a motion then by Commissioner Kumji and a second by Commissioner Chavez. Um, I'll request that you do a vote and then we'll do a roll call. Thank you, Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Gerber. Yes. Commissioner Kumijian. Yes. And Chair Burrell. Yes. And that carries 401. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to Glendora Teens Helping Others update. I'd like to invite Recreation Superintendent Nanny Warner back up to report. Good evening again. And I have three special guests with me that I'm going to ask to come up. Come up. <laughs> Um, many of you are newer, so I wanted to give a little bit of history on how um, this group started. Originally, it was the Teen Advisory Board, or TAB. Um, it started in December of 2015. We had a rec specialist that came on board with a lot of um, leadership experience and working with teens from um, other cities. Um, we decided to then change the name. It was very similar to the library teen advisory board, and we didn't want there to be any confusion. So they changed the name to GTHO, and it stands for Glendora Teens Helping Others. Um, when they first started, they were meeting consistently every Friday at three o'clock at the teen center. Um, that recreation specialist did a great job of doing guest speaker series, um, bringing in organizations like Project Sister doing um, girls self-defense, boys um, healthy relationships, um, drunk carts where the kids had the experience to drive the carts with different goggles of what it would be like if they were two beers, eight beers, marijuana, all that kind of stuff, how to walk the line. Um, and it was great. And it was something that he was building and, and doing a great job of. Um, he moved on to be a teacher and then COVID hit. So um, we kind of transitioned the GTHO group over COVID to more of like Zoom meetings, just having them connect with one another. It was an, a hard time anyway. We, at that time, we weren't going to be able to have guest speakers. Um, the previous recreation supervisor would have yoga when we were allowed to meet in person again. We did yoga out in the park at the teen center, but it was challenging. So it's kind of taken some twists and turns. Um, currently, um, the GTHO kind of then transitioned in with our teen hangouts that we kind of started more so over COVID and they're kind of a blurred line. So each of them are meeting once a month. And um, we have two recreation aides. We have Providence Riggs and I'll brag about Providence. She's a Glendora High graduate, um, is gonna be going to UCLA in the fall to study psychology. Social, welfare. Social welfare, but, sorry, yeah. close <laughs> enough. <laughs> and we have uh, Sabina Huerta, who has a degree in recreation and has been with us for about a year. A year, city works for years. Oh, happy yeah. congratulations. Um, but she's um, not gonna be staying much longer. She just received an offer working for the city of Rialto. Um, but the two of them have really spearheaded this uh, um, two groups and have taken charge of it, planning activities, doing events. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, and then they have a special guest with them. So you go to the next one. Okay. So yes, she kind of went over the history. So you can go to the next one again. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're doing it kind of by month. So what we did each month. So in September, we had a presentation for social and emotional development and study skills because it was right when they were back in school. And obviously we knew, okay, they're back in school after COVID. So it was like a huge adjustment for these kids. So we tried to have like a presentation with different study skills. We also did a lot of discussions on things like bullying, peer pressure, struggles to fit in. We did talk about substance abuse briefly. We tried to keep that brief because there started to be a little bit of a inappropriate conversation. So we were like, okay, we're gonna like put this back. But yeah, it was really good. The kids were super honest and we felt like they were all kind of being vulnerable and seemed to really get a lot from it. So that was awesome. We did get feedback though, that they felt like they were doing more schoolwork. So we tried to 
in the future not do as many slideshows, which I get. Um, and at that point, we had 12 kids in attendance. So our club was still, it was smaller than it used to be, but like pretty good amount were coming back. And then um, in October, we did a spooky yoga and we had an instructor, Autumn, come in and she's super awesome. She's come a couple of times and she always does it for free. She's just it's very, you know, helpful. So yeah, so she came and she did the yoga and the kids seemed to really like it. It was actually Pearl's first time doing yoga. So that was exciting. Um, and we only had seven kids in attendance, but we still felt like it was a really good class. And then October we moved and we had a Fright Fest party, which was basically a Halloween party. They came in costume. They did like a little fashion show, which was super cute. And we played like spooky music and they showed their costumes off. And then we picked a couple of winners. We had a spooky firefighter and three fairies that were our winners. And then we gave prizes out. We also did games like Fear Factor, guessing games on how many candy corns in the jar. And then we did kind of like a rotation of games too. And they broke into teams. They really liked that one. And we had 15 kids in attendance. So that one, we were like, ooh, this is good, real party. And then in November, we had seven kids in attendance and we had Autumn again. And this time she did a hip hop dance class and we did the song Dance Monkey. So they really enjoyed that one, especially because we do have a couple of kids that like do dance outside of the teen center. So they love that. And then we moved to another event in November. So at this point, you guys probably noticed we were doing two events a month still. And that was because we still felt like we had like a decent amount of kids coming. Currently, we're doing one because we decided we want to space it out and do like more exciting things once a month versus two things that were smaller to try and lure them in once a month. Um, so then we did a Friendsgiving and we had a Thanksgiving feast with food from Boston Market. We had 15, we were thinking might've been maybe even a little bit maybe more, little but bit more. we're not 100% sure. Yeah, that one was a really good turnout because we had free food. Uh, we also though decorated pine cones and did um, canvas paintings where they gathered like leaves and things and kind of used it as like a stamp on canvases. So that one was another one that everybody loved it, had a good time. And then Sabina's gonna start for December. Um, next slide, please. And so um, as Providence has said, um, October, November, and December, we were still doing two hangouts a month. So for December, the, our first hangout was a movie night hangout where we did watch the movie Elf on the projector in the Foothill and Route 66 meeting room. Uh, we provided hot cocoa, pizza, cookies, and popcorn. Uh, we told the kids to wear your PJs, bring a blanket, bring a pillow um, so that then we had the lights out so that it was more of an actual movie theater type of feeling. And for that hangout, we had about eight kids who attended. Our second teen hangout for December was a holiday party where we had a gingerbread housemaking contest and we paired each person into teams of two. Also did a cookie decorating contest and we um, advertised to wear a festive slash ugly sweater. And we had a little contest for that. And aside from having the fun activities, we also had each kid make one or two Christmas slash holiday cards for the elderly. And we ended up dropping that off. And for that, we had about nine kids that attended. And moving into January, that's when we noticed um, one hangout would be a little bit more in attendance than the other. So we switched to one hangout a month. And so for the month of January, we did a Bob Ross painting where we used the projector again. We picked a simple, easy Bob Ross video. And while that was playing, we ended up painting what was being played. And for that, we had roughly about six kids who attended that. And moving into February, we did a cupcake decorating party where we had various items, cupcakes, of course, different frosting, sprinkles, fruit. And we also had chocolate dipped um, food items as well, strawberries, marshmallows, and pretzels, and then um, our craft, I guess, for that was making Valentine's for 
um, whom, whom we loved. And for that hangout, we noticed more kids were there and there was roughly about 15 kids that were there. A majority of them were there for food, but you know what, that's okay. <laughs> And then next slide. And then moving into March, we had a St. Patty's Day themed party, which was our St. Patty's Day shenanigans. And we did a themed scavenger hunt uh, where they had to find a diamond. And so we had printed out a diamond emoji and we used our teen lounge and the playground right um, I guess not behind, but to the right of the building. We had put all of the items there for them to find. And we had them pair up into teams of two to work together to try to find the items for the scavenger hunt. And then the last item for that scavenger hunt was to find the pot of gold. And in there was a um, admission ticket to go into our actual party where we had um, an array of snacks. And then our craft for that was making an origami four leaf clover. And we had roughly about 12 kids that attended. Um, moving into April, we did a spring canvas painting to get us into the jumpstart of spring where um, we had asked our members of the team board what canvas painting they would like to do and they wanted to do one of a baby chick and backtracking just a little bit before all of our um, canvas paintings we provided the canvas the paint and the paint brushes so all the kids had to do was just bring themselves and for that we had about five kids who attended and I'm sure as you could see for after the spring canvas painting for April and May there's more hangouts that we did. We transitioned into having a youth of all ages hangout and I will let Providence take over for that. So yeah, essentially we started getting feedback from our like actual teens that they were getting kind of frustrated because we had more and more little kids coming to the hangouts. And so we were like, okay, like that makes sense. If you're 15, you don't hang out with the six-year-old. So what we did is we did an all ages program and we're still doing our teen hangouts and we're being a lot more strict about like, it's 11 and up, it's 11 to 17. So now we have these little kid events and those pretty good turnouts because we have this daycare that comes regularly. And so there's always at least like seven or eight kids. And so that's been fun. And we gear the activities more for like early elementary, elementary kids. Um, so we've done... Yeah, we did a, another canvas painting with them. They made little like octopuses. octopuses. And then we also did an Easter egg hunt and they loved that. That was like total hit. I think we had like at least 10 kids for that one. But yes, yeah, so we've tried to accommodate the older kids as well as our younger kids that are consistently coming. Because even though we're the teen center, we do tend to get a lot of younger children. So, and then, okay, we have Pearl here. She is actually one of our teen board members. And so she's going to be speaking about the volunteer opportunities and most of them she's participated in. So. Um, okay, so. Oh. Um, okay, so first we did the pumpkin festival um, where it was at a park and we did a bunch of stations. I was at the butter station and it was really fun making butter and we served them with salted crackers um, and the Halloween carnival was also at another park and there was a bunch of fun stations and a bunch of carnival games and a ferris wheel there. Um, for the bake sale we did that at the teen center. Um, we sold baked goods and store-bought goods. Um, the Easter egg hunt, we did that at the Fink Finder Park and we had sections of Easter egg hunts for the smaller kids and the older kids as well. Um, for Earth Day, we did that at the Glendora Library and there was a bunch of stations that we did um, and there will also be concerts in the park 
this summer. And at the bake sale, we raised like $120, I yeah. think. Yeah. Oh yeah, we raised $120 at our bake sale. <laughs> to follow up. So as you can see, I mean, they're putting a tremendous amount of work and effort into it. And the kids that are coming are having a wonderful time and enjoying it. We would love to spread the word that this is here. We're doing this. Um, it's been challenging. Um, we've discussed like, how can we get more kids here? We do have the teen shuttle that's going to Goddard, Sandberg, uh, Royal Oak, Charter Oak, and Glendora High. Um, it used to just be able to drop us off at the teen center. Well, now they're getting the kids, which is a great system. They're learning how to use um, public transportation in a really safe way, but they're no longer just getting dropped off at the teen center. They're getting dropped off all around town, downtown, the library. <laughs> Very few are making it to the teen center. So we've talked about like making really catchy flyers or fun things or incentivize them when we pick them up originally, because a lot of kids are still writing, but how do we get them to write all the way down to the teen center? Um, because when we originally started the board, it was to teach them leadership skills and then to have them infiltrate their schools to help us promote the teen center with trips and activities. We are doing four trips this summer. We're gonna be going to Huntington Beach next week, $15 all day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then July 7th, we're going to a Dodger game. And then July, 23rd, I believe it is, we are going to Magic Mountain all day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then we'll be doing a beach bonfire trip. So it's a fun opportunity for middle school and young high school students to go do something with their friends. Their parents don't have to drive them. They get a little bit of freedom, um, but it's getting the word out and having parents feel comfortable in letting their kids come on our trips. So we look to you guys to help spread the word. We have it advertised in our books. We'll be spreading things out on social media. We have a email blast that'll be going out weekly or bi-weekly from our department, um, sending it out to everyone in our data bank for active net, trying to get the word out of what programs we have happening. Also, Madam Chair, um, we used to be on the campus at lunches at Sandberg and Goddard. So our rec leaders were directly involved with those kids and would see them they knew our faces and, and it grew there when, when our uh, Joseph was running it. Um, then COVID hit and we have not been able to get back on campuses, which, so a lot of the kids don't know us. Uh, they don't know that it's there. Um, so that has been a, a huge hurdle to try to get around to uh, get the kids down to the center. 2019 was the last year we did a summer kickoff. We used to try to do a fun event. It was like $5 or sometimes free. And we'd have like a gyro jump, a DJ, and try to invite all the middle school students to come for that a summer event. And we used to get a pretty decent turnout and then have our flyers and everything kind of ready for the summer and telling their parents we're dropping non-custodial, like you don't have to sign up. You can come just, I'm going to come on Monday for three hours. I'm going to drop by on Tuesday. Um, because what really makes it fun is the kids who are there, like, if more kids come, then our staff can provide the activities. We have everything there, but it obviously makes it easier to plan when we know we have a consistent group of kids coming for a game of dodgeball or laser tag or you name it, they can do it, but we actually need the kids in the facility. So we're still coming out of COVID and hope that this summer we start to see ourselves trending back up. You guys have any questions? Um Yes, um, I do. Is, so this is a daily thing, correct? In the afternoons or the, the, the teen time? Yeah, so hangout? it's a daily thing during the school year. Um, it used to be 2.30 to 7. However, with the block scheduling at Glendora High School, it was challenging for them to make it at 2.30. So we switched the rooms, the computer lab and teen lounge until 3 o'clock. So from 3 to 7, Monday through Friday, um, during the school year, we have staff in those rooms engaging with the youth. And then we have Providence and Sabina who come in and they come on their day and specifically do their program. But Monday through Friday, those rooms are always open. They could do homework help, hang out, play cards, and the game room's still open and the gym's still open. During the summer, we'll start this Monday, it'll transition. Um, staff will be coming in at 10 o'clock and um, we'll be out of the building at six. So from 10 to six, there is programming, computer lab, teen lounge, games, activities, arts and crafts, um, 
depending on the kids that are there, we'll do a pool tournament, a ping pong tournament with you prizes. We close the rooms down from one to two every day to get them out of the rooms. And we'll go in the gym and do like dodgeball or over the line, or we'll go outside and play, you know, with water balloons. Um, on special days, we'll have like a laser tag company come and they convert the gym with all the inflatables and the kids, um, can do laser tag. We'll surprise them on a really hot day and have the Kona ice truck come and everyone can just get a Kona ice. Um, we used to partner with the Glendora Unified School District and do a free lunch program. Um, that the last time we did that was the summer of 2019. And I don't, we're not anticipated to do it this summer. They are hosting it at their school sites. Um, but that was a big draw. People would come and utilize the lunch program at our facility. Um, but yes, every day there is something. Okay. And is there a way where you could go to the schools? Like when, when school starts back up? and present or liaison, like sending it, uh, having a teen liaison present to the schools or with or a, a child or a teen from each school having to be that conduit between. That would be a great idea. That was the goal of the board is having them like having representation from each school on our board and they would kind right. of filter into it. Um, we do attend the PTA council meetings. And that's where a PTA um, president from every school district is there. We attend that monthly and give them updates and they are putting it out in their newsletters, but it's not the same as tangibly seeing the child. Um, so we will put together a packet for them to go out um, for the school year, but a lot of everything is electronic now. A lot of them, they're not doing it in person. You don't have something to hold. Um, but that's the key is how to, get them to our place so they can realize what we offer and then go from there. Also, um, we used to do a mailer where we would um, give the, we would get the addresses from the school district and be able to mail to all incoming sixth, seventh and eighth graders. It was a uh, really a two page or four page mailer that had all our events and everything. And so we hit those people. Um, we no longer, do that um, with the school district and stuff. So those are ways that, you know, it's hard. It's been challenging for us to, to get into those areas. Um, and that it, it's now mainly we have to stand on the sidewalk kind of and try to hit them um, when they walk off campus. Yeah. Well, you have great programs. Congrats. Thank you. Anybody else have any? Questions? Yeah, I think the lunch program is a fantastic way to do that. Uh, because I remember as a kid, I'd always like to go to the park, like right after I was done with my homework and go and play, but they had like lunches, you know, in the summer or summer school, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't wait just to get out there. And then sports is a big way to do it. I think, well, when you think about sports, Lindora has a pretty good basketball program or they have good sports programs and they've, there is a way where we can get the coaches to kind of, you know, volunteer and say, Hey, you know, this program is going to be at the teen center. Mm -hmm. You can even get an actual athlete that's kind of for it. Mm -hmm. He shows up then they all show up. Yes. So it, that really kind of sometimes what it takes. And mm -hmm. it's kind of what I learned, but I mean, however way the, the foundation can help, I, I would definitely be motivated to help something like that. Um, before um, we ever partnered with the school district for the lunch during the summer on early outs, we would do like a sign up the day before and it would be $2 and we would go do the hot dog and drink from Sam's club. Um, so we would just buy the hot dogs and then we just gave them a can of soda or like a, a thing of chips. And we had a pretty good following of kids who like looked for it. And that was like their lunch on early out day. Um, so that's something we can consider bringing back be hard to do a hot dog maybe every day during the summer, but um, partner with, you know, some other vendors or whatever and see if we could do some different pizza or things like that. But obviously food is a big draw. Yeah. So. Is there anything else that sticks out that you think, you know, or um, individuals that came up to speak think that might be a better, because um, when, when I said sports, I know she lit up. She's like, yeah, that's a good it's a good idea you got gymnastics you got a bunch of different things and i think if you i think because i all i could think of that's why kids wanted to go to the centers in cities is because they want to go play caroms or whatever mm -hmm. they want to do but um 
yeah, I think more stuff like that. Again, if there's something that um, you think that we can help as a, you know, even the, the foundation. Um, and that's something that kind of changes as the kids change. I remember um, a handful of years ago, Texas Hold'em was really popular and we would house these Texan Hold'em tournaments and there'd be like 50 kids in the room for our Texas and our staff would be the dealer. We bought them green visor shades. We'd have chips and salsa. And it was, there was actually no money being won. It was gift cards or like prizes and everyone came out a winner. So it wasn't technically gambling, but we were teaching them how to play Texas Hold'em and they loved it. And it was like, they were cheering and they'd go from the winner's table to this table. And that was like a handful of years ago. And that was really popular on ESPN. And that was driven by the kids at the time. And a couple of our staff members were playing. And so then they were really into it for a while. It was like hearts. And then a couple of years ago, we had a staff member who was like into dominoes. So it's kind of, it's funny to see like what fluctuates. And then all of a sudden, if some people are into it, then like everybody's into it. And then you can kind of like plan and organize things around whatever random activity, but I wouldn't have thought of that. Pokemon. Yeah. Or like Pokemon go or whatever. So was walking around yeah. like running into places because they were like looking <laughs> that's why we say we're happy to do whatever within reason they want to do it's just having them come to find out their ideas yeah and i think uh just to find and like the last thing i wanted to mention i actually uh was doing the adult basketball league at the teen mm -hmm. center i did it for like four years so yeah, obviously I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, people always think it's the teen center. It's the Crowther Teen and Family Center. So right. it is all ages. So when they talked about the younger program, that is our feeder program. I mean, we have kids who are coming from Washington Elementary School after school, and they're coming from third, fourth grade, and then they're coming all the way through high school. And then some of them we've hired. So we don't want to dismiss them like, oh, you're the little person because they're going to someday grow up and be a sixth grader. So we want to encourage and involve everybody at all ages that's a good point yeah because that's where it starts that's where mm -hmm. you continue that yeah no definitely i think it's a however we can get back out to the schools in the uh educational system where all the kids are at you know uh not only um goddard's but you got colon sellers because once you pull from all that you get a real influx of kids i believe but i guess it's going to take more than you know more kids or mm -hmm. more people that are going to be doing that but whatever maybe you think we could help in ideas and you know kind of appreciate that represent uh, i'm all in uh, i think that'd be great thanks ladies thank you very much for coming up and standing i know it's challenging to stand at a podium and talk to some people stand, looking down upon you we're, we're certainly not looking down upon you we appreciate your time your efforts. And I have actually been down there and been a witness to some of those events that you spoke about. And uh, I saw your enthusiasm to, for the kids. I saw the kids response to you guys. Um, so pat yourselves on the back for doing a job well done. Um, and don't lose the enthusiasm, whether it's here or wherever you go, keep that enthusiasm because you will touch some kids lives and you will make a difference. So don't stop. Uh, one of the things that I, I honestly believe that the, the, the connection with the teen center and the community, unfortunately, there's a big disconnect and it has been because of the location and how to get to and fro. Uh, it it ha unfortunately has a stigma to it um, for safety for where it's located. And it's that it's a stigma. It, it, there's no relationship whatsoever to any of those thoughts if you actually go there and see who is there, how it's run and, and, and all the opportunities and activities. And I think it's a big opportunity for this community because there's a great number of youth out there. And at that age, that's the most important time of their lives that um, we can connect with them and keep them on the right path. Um, so to me, um, I, I honestly think it's like you said, Annie, it's, it's how do we get them there? Uh, whether we can come up with a, in the summertime, there is a location for pickup and drop off um, for free, connect, free shuttle service because parents don't necessarily have the opportunity to get their kids there, similar to what we're doing during the summer. Um, doing an open house um, and inviting families there and showing them what goes on. Let 
your staff um, make presentations and share with them. Let the students that are already a part of it communicate and, and get those people there. Like you mentioned basketball, there are more kids going through the teen center during the basketball season because they have to, right? They have to participate in that sport at that location. Uh, so at that, that's the time where you've got their attention. You've got the parents' attention, especially for the younger kids to see what goes on. Uh, having game nights, you talked about game nights, inviting the, 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 the parents with the kids. Let, it's the parents' responsibility to feel comfortable and the minute you get them there, then it's going to spread like wildfire. Um, having a new director, um, uh, you have a lot of you have some shoes to fill um, for sure. Um, but um, putting your enthusiasm and your brains to it and bringing it to this um, panel, we are definitely worthy of hearing your insights and, and sharing with you guys. But um, uh, I honestly think that if we put our brain our brains together and really strive to bring some effort to bring that together i think we can enrich the, the teen center back to what it was and i think back to um my oldest daughter um when she was in high school and she worked there one summer and was she would come home after a day at the summer and she would be completely exhausted because the number of kids that were there and the number of kids that were there on a regular basis they got to know him by name, everybody by name. And that's, unfortunately, COVID has hit, but we, we all have to move forward. So how do we get ourselves back there? And these are the challenges. But um, like I said, getting out to the schools, getting people there when they have to be there, getting in front of people's faces, I think will be the best. And I want, I'm looking forward to trying to come back down there and, and be a participant in some of the events that you have hearing from the kids and asking them what, what is it going to take to get other kids here and um, how we can be of support to you in that regards. Be happy to do that because you have a great, we have a great location and many, many things to involve. And when I hear six to 15 kids, when we have 2,300 kids at the high school, um, over 600 at each middle school, um, there's a ways to go. And I think it's just a matter of continuing to, to stay focused. So um, ladies, again, thank you for coming and speaking. Um, much appreciated. So appreciate it, your time. Um, thank you. Um, you mentioned you guys in your presentation about how younger kids, how, how is, are the dates for these events in the book? I, I like, or, or do you not plan that far out? original like the teen hangouts like it's always in the book it's like a it's always on Thursdays that uh -huh. kind of thing or every other Thursday um for the kids one we haven't added that into the book yet because it is still kind of new but we should do that that's definitely something we should do and we do put flyers in our teen center okay. so like when the kids come in we like obviously tell them all oh we're gonna be doing this on Tuesday the ones that we like know and then I'll try and like walk around I'll just be like hey guys like come tomorrow but we should be putting it in the booklet with our other teen center stuff for sure yeah my yeah. a third grader that would have in love all that but you know i'm not just taking her and dropping her off there all the time so we would we would have missed that um about like the school i know you mentioned pta but actually maybe working with the um asb advisors and getting one of the asb kids to actually be the liaison because uh, like how you mentioned the athletes so the asb goes mm -hmm. maybe and maybe make it so that they have to go to the the meetings one of each from the school um i know that they do a big graduation ceremony where they're kind of including them together so maybe the asb kids can you know take turns or have one of them outreach coordinator or something like that um and then um maybe i, I know we get that weekly um memo from the school district on the parent square app mm -hmm. maybe they can i know they've included other kind of non GUSD activities in there. Maybe that can be included on there as well. Um, included um, special events and things like that. We have included them on that. But yeah, if we do like an open house or something, I think mm -hmm. that would be, cause I know we get a bunch, a bunch of those. Um, yeah, but that, that was just my, but excellent presentation. Well done guys. I know for those, so it, sometimes it probably feels like you plan really, really hard. And then like six kids come and you're like, 
well, but like for those six, I'm sure it made like such a huge difference. And for their parents, like it makes a world of difference. So thank you for all your hard work. It's definitely noticed and appreciated. Thanks. Okay. Um, can I request a motion to uh, receive and file a report? I motion. Second. Thank you. That is a motion by Commissioner Gerber, a second by Commissioner Chavez. Um, I will request a vote and do a roll call. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Gerber? Yes. Commissioner Kumjian? Yes. And Chair Burrell? Yes. That passes 401. Thank you. Okay, we will now move on to the uh, Older Americans Month and special event presentation. I'd like to invite Office Assistant Raquel Oros. Did I say that right? Rachel. Okay, it says, okay, thank you. I just have to let the record show that it says Raquel. I was like, I thought it was You did Rachel, the last name very but... well. So. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. Um, so uh, next slide, please. As you know, uh, every May, the uh, Administration for Community Living leads the observance for Older Americans Month. This year's theme was Age My Way, which was chosen to focus on how older adults can plan to live independently in their communities for as long as possible. The theme was an opportunity to explore the many ways older adults can be involved with their communities, obviously a focus with the adults at the Lefetra Center. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so we recently hosted our uh, annual Older Americans Luncheon to honor the very diverse ways in which the older adults at the Lefetra Center contribute to their community. Next slide, please. Our luncheon was on Thursday, May 26. The theme, Age My Way, focused on the ways older adults can remain involved in their communities as they age. So what each person needs and prefers is unique. The LaFatra Center encourages older adults to age their way by offering a variety of activities from arts and crafts and games to fitness and the arts. Our groups, clubs, and classes such as Patch, Pin, and Pearl, Beating Buddies, Bridge, Bingo, Country Line Dancing, Tai Chi, Cinema, Ping Pong, etc., are all led by older adults within the community, most of whom are volunteers. We also have many seniors who give their time to help others, whether it be in our grief support group, in the afterstroke support group, IDOS, the support group for the visually impaired, or in classes like Learn to Use Your Apple Products. The LaFetra Center is proud to have a community that ages their way through all sorts of activities and interests. Next slide, please. At the Older Americans Luncheon, guests were treated to a Mediterranean lunch, an award ceremony for the Ruth Harper awardees, there they are, and a musical performance by our very own Sing for Joy group. 67 participants were in attendance in addition to 30 performers from Sing for Joy. Next slide, please. Uh, at the end of the event, there was a raffle where participants won gift cards, the centerpiece arrangements, and gifts from the event sponsors. So this is obviously all in stark contrast to our drive through in 2021. We we're very happy to have people eating lunch back in the building again. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have any questions other than just congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, the LaFetra Center is by and far one of the best um, options in this community for our, our elderly. Uh, again, sometimes very underutilized, uh, just because at, I think at older age, certain people don't have the confidence or the comfort level to try and branch out and, and do that type of thing. But um, we do, the community does two things extremely well. That's cater to the very young and we cater to our senior citizens. Um, and we take pride in that. And I think it's uh, an amazing thing that we do. And um, you guys do an amazing job down at the LaFetra Center. So that's to kudos to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have any questions, but yeah, just to kind of piggyback on what Dave said, 
I've been there and I've seen um, some of the events they have and it, it's awesome to see what you guys do. And Thank they really you. need it. Yeah. So good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, my loss for not being uh, able to be at the event, um, the, the slash uh, for the uh, award presentations. Um, but it is, yeah, it is a great facility. That's why the city is wonderful. I mean, we cater to all from one to to 100. So it's a great city. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. It was a fantastic event. The food was delicious. I, I was super impressed by the turnout. I was blown away at that, how excited they were all to be back together. It was really great. And to um, the three award winners seemed so surprised, I think, because like it was not on anyone's top of mind because like it had been so long. Yeah, since two of them were it. from 2020. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was really <laughs> awesome um, to see everyone's excitement. And um, it was just, you did a wonderful job. And I know you had to fly solo a little bit and uh but it, it was it was awesome so thank job. you appreciate it everybody okay uh can i request a motion to receive and file i will motion i'll second thank you that is a motion by uh commissioner gerber a second by commissioner kumjian i will request a vote and do a roll call Commissioner Chavez, I think we're waiting on a vote. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Commissioner Gerber? Yes. Commissioner Kum Jin? Yes. Chair Burrill? Yes. And that passes for 0 1. Thank you. Uh, okay, now I would like to invite the commission and staff to give closing comments. Commissioner Chavez, would you like to go first? No closing comments. Glad to be back. <laughs> Commissioner Gerber? Uh, Again, nothing other than what we've done. I uh, look forward to, again, getting back down to the teen center. Welcome to the community. Uh, look forward to being a part of what you bring to the to the center. Um, and again, just happy that it's summertime and we get out and, and about and enjoy all the events that uh, you guys put on. Um, a lot of work that goes into it. So happy to have that. Commissioner Kimjin. Yes, um, just thank you for all the presentations tonight and especially to the teams for presenting. They did such a great job. Um, again, uh, just want to wish everybody happy summer and look forward to all the activities and best of luck. Have a great uh, have a great month. Director Aguirre, since I always skip you. <laughs> um, if we can have Romero just give a brief where he came from, uh, how many years he's been in rec um and and his hours in that and he'll be heading up uh, the teen center day-to-day -day activities uh, and that's a huge help to miss warner uh, who had been running it solo for a while um so she's a very happy camper uh, <laughs> to to let some of those things go uh, madam chair and commissioner uh commission um thank you guys um i'm extremely excited to be in the beautiful city of Glendora. Um, I've been in recreation 13 years, um, most of it in the city of Dimebar. I grew up in the city of Dimebar, so I'm well familiar with the area surrounding cities. I've also worked for the city of Riverside and uh, Eastville, but ended up back in Dimebar. I've ran youth and adult programs, field allocation, um, youth programming from day camp to um, our teen programming and also a uh, special event. So I'm well-versed, I'm excited to be here. Um, please, you'll see me at uh, Concerts in the Park, the movies, obviously I'll be at the Teen Center. I look forward to um, meeting you guys, getting to know everyone and I look forward to it and feel free to drop by the Teen Center and we get to know each other a little more. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, I, I don't have anything. So well done so far, all the summer programming, everything that we have to look forward to and everything that started has been awesome. Um, I'm enjoying my journaling class. It's very fun. Um, but yeah, well done everyone. Thanks for your presentations and all your time and hard work, really, really, really hard work. Um, cause it, it's much appreciated by everyone. So thank you. And I will adjourn this meeting at 8.10.